Hello, this section is about Cox regression. In this section, we learn what Cox regression is and how it works, or what its principle is. So far, we have learned Kaplan mile or KM curve and log rank test. Both KM curve and log rank test are univariate analyzers. They can only be used to analyze one risk factor or a single predictor variable. And they can only be used for categorical predictor variable. They cannot be used for continuous predictor. If you want to perform a survival analysis which has multiple predictor variables, or the predictor variables are continuous, you need to use Cox regression. So, what is Cox regression? Cox regression is also known as Cox proportional hazard regression, or Cox period regression. It is a statistical method used to analyze the relationship between survival time and one or more predictive variables. It is a semi-parametric method which makes its fewer assumptions about the distribution of survival times compared to parametric tests. Cox regression can be used for continuous predictive variables, categorical variables, and it can be used to build a prediction model for multiple variables. It models hazard function to predict instantaneous hazard rate at a specific time given that an individual has survived up to that time. This is a formula of Cox regression model. The model is an exponential model and it is based on hazard rate. The dependent variable is hazard rate or the probability of an event occurring at a given time. X variables in the model are predictor variables and beta values are estimated coefficients. And H0t is Bayley's hazard when all the predictor variables equal zero. E power beta are hazard ratios for each predictor variables. And hazard ratio is defined as the ratio an event or outcome happening in one group to that of an other group. For example, hazard ratio of death from lung cancer is 2 for smokers means the chance of an individual dying from lung cancer is twice if he is a smoker compared to non-smoker. Or hazard ratio of death from a group of patients treated by method 2 to patients treated by method 1 is 6 means the chances of a patient dying is 6 times higher if he is treated by treatment 2 compared to a patient treated by treatment 1. So we can say hazard ratio describes the effect of an predictor variable on the outcome or that is a hazard rate in this case. It is similar to odd ratio in logistic regression and regression coefficient in linear regression. In general, similar to odd ratio, if hazard ratio equals 1, there is no effect or risk of predictor variable on outcome. When hazard ratio is greater than 1, it shows greater risk in the treatment group compared to the control group. While if the hazard ratio is smaller than 1, the treatment group shows less risk than the control group. So Cox regression in survival analysis aims to estimate the hazard ratio for predictor variables of interest. To have a better understanding of Cox regression, we will look at it through an example. The example is to build a model to predict hazard rate of a group of patients based on treatment and their ages. The research hypothesis for this study is treatment method and age can be used to predict the hazard rate for the patient group. To test this hypothesis, we are going to test the now hypothesis where hazard rate for treatment method and the patient age are equal to zero. Opposite to now hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis says hazard rate for treatment method and for patient age are different from zero. This hypothesis corresponds to the research hypothesis. The Cox regression is performed with several assumptions. The first assumption assumes that 
that has a ratio of two groups remain constant throughout the flowing period. The second assumption assumes the survival times of individuals are independent. This means that the survival time of one patient does not depend on the survival time of another. The third assumption assumes that the censoring is uninformative about the outcome of interest. This assumption is satisfied when there is no relationship between the probability of censoring and the event of interest. Uh, for example, in clinical trials, we should carefully assess that the loss of flowing up diagnosis depends on the patient's health. We will examine three models. This is a reorganized result of first model analyzed using R. This model has only one predictor variable, Chisman. The first table shows coefficient, standard error of coefficient, this value and p value. The table also includes hazard ratio, and that is an exponent of coefficient, and the confidence interval of hazard ratio. The table also shows the number of patients and the number of event occurring. A p value is 0 0.023. It is smaller than 0 0.05, so Chisholm method significantly affects hazard rate. The hazard ratio of 6.23 means the treatment method 2 has more than 6 times higher risk than treatment method 1. 2 divided by 1 next to the treatment means that the risk from the treatment 2 is estimated based on the risk from treatment 1. The second table shows the result of global tests including line loose test, wall test, and score test. All three tests show p-value smaller than 0.05. It means the model is significant. This is the second model. This model has two predictor variables, Chisholm and H. The second table shows all three tests are significant, so the model is significant. However, the p-value of the Chisholm is 0.052. It is not significant. Why the A show a significant effect on the hazard ratio? Also, the p-value for treatment is slightly higher than 0.05. The hazard ratio is 6.58, showing that patient treated with the method 2 has a 6.55 times higher risk of death at any time compared to the patient treated with the method 1. Also, the log range test in previous tutorials show was significant different between two Chisholm methods. So, it is likely that there is a different effect between two Chisholm. The hazard ratio for age is 1.24, indicating that a, a patient one year older than another patient, but being given the same Chisholm, has an increased risk of dying by a factor of 1.24. In this case, the confidence interval does not contain one, indicating the statistical significance of age. This is the last model, the model 3. This model includes the interaction term, and this is the interaction term. The global test showed that the model is significant. However, no significance was observed for Chisholm, age, as well as interaction. Because there is no significant interaction between Chisholm and age, we should not include the interaction in the model. That means we should use the model 2 for prediction. The model 2 we have already discussed previously. This is the last tutorial for survival analysis. I hope you enjoy my lectures. See you next time. Thank you.